I mean, because really, if you think about it, all we're doing is we're taking big pieces of wood and we turn them into little pieces of wood. And then we make music with them. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rattle King Guitar Restorations. I am James, and this is Lofi. He's mad because I didn't give him any of my human food. Because it's bad for his belly. Anyways, uh, what did I do in guitar building class this week? Well, after we got out of class, let me look at my photo reference over here on the side. Uh, let's see. We did a test for a project that's coming up. Well, it's already kind of in production now, but it's not been released because we're waiting for some things to clear up anyways uh this is a wood grain that is similar at least in appearance to paulonia wood which is the um popular species guess on the other uh telecaster style guitar and um I, I picked this piece of wood because I just, please don't, please, please, yeah, you better go that way. <clears throat> this is why we can't have nice things. It's a similar grain pattern. Um, this wood is harder, so it's not going to absorb like the other wood is going to. But we're going to give it a shot anyway. So what I did is I, is I stained half of it with some trans tint in some alcohol. And uh, I am using General Finish's whitewash. And I followed their prep directions the way they wanted you. you want to, they want you to sand up through the grits to a certain point. And then using a red Scotch-Brite pad and a mixture of 50% water and 50% denatured alcohol, then you scrub that and raise the grain and uh, and then I just used a brush and I put a coat of this finish on and then I just wiped it off waited a couple three hours put another layer on left it um, there's not a lot of discernible difference between the area that was dyed and the area that's not dyed I mean if you look at it super close you might be able to tell the difference it's not enough of a difference to make it worth the effort. Does that make sense? So um, we kind of got the concept down for getting this kind of a translucent white. I'm putting some clear on it right now to see uh, what that looks like. And uh, we'll kind of we'll kind of go from there and see if we get to the point where we're actually going to chop a piece off of the frame, the leftover part of that guitar body. Uh, from the CNC process to test a part of the actual wood that we're going to use because that's kind of what we do. Um, if you ever want to make an old man happy, like me, test, test, and then, I don't know, test some more. So anyways, we did that before we got to class. I did get a new tool. I got, uh, I got a new Shinto rasp, and I got the rasp that has the extension handle on it. So that it's more of like a motion you would use if you were planing. Um, and, you know, we want to put our thumbs up because we're positive people. No, we do that because we don't get an impingement movement in our shoulders and we hurt our shoulders more. Um, my, uh, my PT, um, my physical therapist, has been exceedingly helpful with me in trying to... I will bring her the motions that I do in... Um, various aspects of my life and say, I have to do this a lot. How would I do that? She'll say, well, you can do this, but turn your arm like this, or you can do this, but move your body this way. So that's uh, been helpful. Uh, so we got that. We got that. Um, oh, the final part is in for the other build. The uh, slotted uh, fingerboards came in. Those maple fingerboards I told you about. Yeah, they're back. And so now we're anyways, we're going into the pile into that part of the production. So uh, let's 
look back and I guess we'll talk about what we did at school. We basically, we continued on fretting. Um, if you remember last episode, we had installed the frets. We had nipped the ends flush. We had filed them flush and we had put the 45 degree angle on the end of them. This week we started going through and um, leveling the frets and then starting to put a crown on them. So we did that. Uh, I noticed during that process, I have a little bit of an alignment issue. <clears throat> now, according to my instructor, he, he kind of looks at me and he's like, this is what you're, this is what you're getting bent out of shape about. Because now uh, everything I look at is like through machinist eyes. So he's like, you're maybe a 30 second off. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's a mile and a half compared to what uh, I'm having to do in class. So I'm having to decide whether this bridge alignment issue, if I'm willing to eat up some of my adjustability or my tolerance in starting the guitar or if I have to make some sort of a modification to this bridge because I have to shift it towards the bass side again a fat 30 second and it might not seem like a lot but you know if I can get it if I can get it in the middle of my plus minus tolerance then that means I've got maximum adjustability for um, you know, for, for getting things right. So I'm going to have to think about that. Um, so we taped up our fretboards and we start filing them, you know, start getting them flattened. And, uh, I had two pesky, um, frets kind of 12, 13, 14 position. And, uh, in, in getting those flattened, I kind of ate up uh, the last two frets, the 20 and 21st fret. Um, there's not a lot of meat on there. So I'm going to have to think about, you know, am I going to be able to save that? That's what, that's what I'm going to have to do this week. Because at the end of the session, that's kind of what I came to. I, I didn't get a picture of it, but my, um, my body, the electronics package has been installed. I just need to do final soldering. My pickups are in, pickup rings are on, bridge is on. Uh, tone volume switch those are all installed the uh, instrument jack plate is installed and so now we're just waiting to do neck work and uh, you know we uh, we lose a Saturday because of turkey day so I've got this week and I've got next week to take a good hard look at that neck and come to a conclusion about what I'm going to do. Am I going to be able to save it? Am I going to have to pull some frets and uh, redo that? I think I've got uh, an appropriate fret wire. If not, I'll just have to order some. Um, and luckily, Stumac is relatively close, so I don't know, a couple of days when I get that. Um, and so that's, that's what's going on in class. Uh, outside of class, uh, I started, and I think, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it on this channel, um, I have started a part-time gig, um, oddly enough, working in the wood shop for the guitar program, of which I am taking a class right now. And um, it's doing, <clears throat> we make guitar parts. Uh, Sinclair is considered a uh, medium volume guitar kit manufacturer in the United States. The funny thing is, if you want to um, <clears throat> put together one of their kits, you have to enroll in one of the guitarbuilding.org classes that are held around the country. Um, the price, I mean, the price for a kit is reasonable. It's whatever your tuition is at wherever you're at, and the kit for right now is 200 bucks. Um, try to find a guitar kit. A decent quality guitar kit for 200 bucks and not going to find it on top of that uh, you're you're going to get a guitar kit uh, that the neck is done I have not been able to find a guitar kit that comes with a neck that is in in the parts stage 
uh, like those kits are. Uh, you get the neck off of the CNC router. It's still got the marks uh, from that ball end mill on the back of the neck. Um, there are, it's still got a tab on the bottom of it. It's still got an oversized, uh, kind of like a boat paddle um, headstock on it with some leftover pieces from uh, the process. Um, we may cut those off for shipping. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not in the shipping department, so. But, so the, the I mean, the, the duties that I'm tasked with at the moment is um, we take raw lumber like this and we turn it into guitar bodies and uh, guitar neck and fingerboard blanks um, to be included in the kits. And this is a stack of uh, maple for uh, fretboards. It's uh, both what they call br hard brown maple and hard white maple. But I'm unclear at the moment if this brown and white thing, I think it's a grading distinction. I could be wrong because I haven't found anything uh, on that yet. To be honest, I haven't looked a lot because we're stupid busy right now. Um, that's that's my thought. I, I'm just thinking that it's a that it, that it may be because I've I've never heard of hard brown maple or hard white maple. You know, I've always heard more along the lines of you know species. Is it sugar maple or hard maple or big leaf maple or you know, whatever? So, but we take uh, these big long. 10, 12, 14 foot long links of lumber um, uh, that we get and we turn them into neck blanks. Um, and next week, it's my understanding that we're probably going to glue up some bodies. And uh, that, from what I, again, from what I understand, because I haven't done it yet, um, we get to have some creative processes because we have. Of certain criteria, like the middle block has to be wide enough to fit a humbucker cavity because we want that to be all in one piece so that your neck pocket and your two um, pickup pockets are in a solid piece of lumber. And then we can make stripes uh, on the wings outside out of different types of wood. So a lot of the offcuts from our process go into the stripe pile and we also order stuff like sapele and walnut and stuff like that so we'll see it'll be a learning process for me um i'm not i'm not doing i'm doing stuff i already know how to do but i do it on the scale of one guy making one neck out of one piece of wood and here we're taking a mass pile of lumber and, you know, between two or three guys over the course of three or four days, you know, we'll produce 50, 75, 100, a couple of hundred necks. You know, we'll, you know, we'll glue up, I don't know, 20 guitar bodies at a time. Uh, you know, I was, I was sorting fretboards the other day and, you know, I started off with a stack of 200 pow ferrule fingerboards and had to sort them for you know width had to sort them for thickness had to grade them for checks and and you know curvature and all kinds of stuff it's a very interesting job i'm very happy to be there um it's um yeah the people i work with are quite nice and um i think it'll be a it'll be a fun gig and that's just that's a direct offshoot for me being in this class and talking to different people, people that are running the program, people that are are teaching the program in the local area. And then I kind of inadvertently started meeting the guys that are over in the building that I'm in for for my welding and my machining courses. That's the same building that the workshop is in. Um, and so, yeah, it's nice if I work in the wood shop. I park in the same parking lot, so that's good because I only have like two parking lots I can use because the truck's too big. So anyways, that's what I did this week in class. Uh, again, I already mentioned Thanksgiving's coming up next week. We don't have class, but 
I might do a short report on what what I've decided to do with the neck on this guitar as far as the frets. Uh, figure out what the what the better solution is going to be on that. Uh, because this is a graded this is a graded course. Um, it's a three credit hour course and you know anything worth doing is worth doing well. So uh, you know I want to put forth as, as best effort as I can and it doesn't matter if it's you know if it's guitar building or if it's welding a can crusher or if it's a trig exam you know whatever it is you're doing if it's worth the time for you to do it it's worth the effort for you to do it well but that's just you know an old guy talking uh anyways that's what's going oh let me, let me show you this one this uh rather large piece of wood we got this is a piece of uh poplar that we cut up to i believe we make paint grade bodies out of this um uh, eight quarter so it's two inches thick it's over 15 inches wide and uh, pretty sure it was 12 foot long could have been 14 it was probably 12 feet long uh, so it was a two-man job just wrestling this thing around to get it on the chop saw to cut it down into a body blank the nice thing about this is um, our uh, our width requirement is 14 to 16 inches wide so it could be a one-piece body it's kind of neat Anyways, that's what's going on. If you got questions, comments, um, if you want to be nice to me, yeah, go ahead. Uh, if you want to talk about my cat, go ahead. If you want to tell me how I should not be making videos or allowed to own a cat, that's fine. Doesn't bother me. If you have questions about the program, if you have questions about the location of this program, go to guitarbuilding.org. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. I'm just a satisfied student uh of that program and through the student hire program at my college now uh, working with them so uh yeah all kinds of questions answered there are all kinds of resources there for you to explore uh, i mean i was wrestling around with uh gear reduction problems that was in one of the workbooks the other day and uh, you know uh, algebra can trip you up so I actually have a I actually have a consulting meeting with someone next week about this problem just because I want to figure it out. So, anyways, uh, I've rambled on. You guys have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, be safe. Uh, be thankful. Don't get wrapped up in the politics over whatever holiday it is because every holiday is politicized now. Uh, it is Thanksgiving, so be thankful for what you have. Um, and uh, we are on the very top part of the food chain when it comes to living conditions compared to the rest of the world. So if you have a bounty, uh, consider sharing some of that bounty with someone in whatever way uh, you see fit uh, to do so. I'm James. You guys have a great week. If I can do it, you can do it. Go to the website, see if you can find a course near you. You guys have a great weekend. Cheers. Hey everybody, thanks for hanging out with us this afternoon here at Rattle Cane Guitar Restorations. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to click my beautiful face above. Hit the bell to be notified next time we drop a video. Here's a video uh, that the hive mind has picked out especially for you. And remember, if I can do it, you can do it. You guys have a great weekend. Shut up, cat! Cheers.